everybody and good morning. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar uh, this morning. Uh, my name's Ben Dorothy and I'm Senior Delivery Manager at Analytium. Um, so Analytium, we are a data and analytics consultancy um, and we're based in the UK. We operate, operate across the UK and Europe. Um, we are a SaaS partner and we deliver SaaS consultancy services to our brand, my SaaS team. So today I'll be your host on this webinar this morning. I'm joined also by Stefan Stoyanov, who is an Associate Data Scientist at Analytium. So Stefan will present today on how the SAS 9 content assessment tool can assist you with understanding your next move um, to SAS on the cloud. We'll provide a brief presentation on the SAS 9 content assessment tool its applications and we'll also run a short demo of how to configure it, run it and as well as viewing the results of the assessment using SAS Visual Analytics. If you've got any questions um, during the presentation, please feel free to use the Q&A um, and we'll try to answer them as we go. But there's also going to be time at the end for um, at the end of the presentation for, for Q&A as well. So without further ado, Stefan, over to you. Thank you, Ben, and welcome to our, our webinar uh, for me too. Um, so uh, let's start with our presentation. In what uh, situation would you need uh, a SAS9 content assessment tool and it will be useful? Um, you may be looking to upgrade your SAS9 form environment for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, the latest release of SAS9 form or uh, to SAS via or uh, to new hardware. This can be uh, a bit daunting at times and it may be difficult to know um, the best way to start, which is why we present uh, to you to your attention today uh, the SAS9 content assessment tool. Um, it is a suite of applications that are designed to help you plan and upgrade an upgrade or a migration or to, to track the ways your environment is being used. Um, the information you get from the SAS9 content assessment helps you to reduce risk and effort in these scenarios. Uh, there are four applications in the SAS9 content assessment, all of which help you to understand your SAS9 system. Uh, the SAS9 inventory gives you a high level understanding of what exists in your SAS9 environment. The SAS9 profile uh, provide, provides a deeper dive into the characteristic of the items identified in the inventory, uh, like how are uh, the structures of my jobs, for example. Um, the SAS9 code check uh, points out uh, issues with your existing SAS code that may prohibit it um, from running uh, in SAS via. And uh, the SAS9 system evaluation identifies potential issues for SAS 9 for upgrades, including an upgrade um, in place. Mm. Let's now um, look at each of these in more detail. The SAS 9 inventory looks at uh, information such as SAS metadata server objects contained in SAS folders, um, SAS server and SAS application server context, content produced by SaaS products located on the file system, content produced um, by SaaS products located on the SaaS content server, SaaS deployment registry information, um, as well as SaaS licensing uh, status and in information. Um, it can be run as needed on multiple SaaS deployments. And for each deployment that is inventory, it creates a data mart. Uh, it is used for reporting, as you can see in the image on the screen. Uh, the reporting is done in SAS Visual Analytics. The second tool is the SAS9 uh, profile. This provides an in-depth view of the details of your SAS environment to help you plan migrations uh, of content and um, um, to know what will work uh, on your target state. For example, it will provide, uh, provide uh, details on uh, content produced by SaaS products in SaaS metadata servers, such as uh, SaaS libraries and tables, uh, SaaS thought processes, SaaS prompts and SaaS prompt groups, SaaS data integration jobs, transformations, 
and generated transforms SAS information maps and uh, SAS all of cubes, um, SAS Web Report Studio and SAS Visual Analytics reports, content produced by SAS products on the SAS content server, and various other SAS artifacts. Reporting uh, is done in SAS Visual Analytics on uh, SAS VIA with pre built reports that provide a drill down into different elements of your SAS environment. For example, this overview report answers questions like um, what number of reports, cubes, libraries, jobs, etc., are we using? Uh, if you want more detail, for example, you can drill down in the features uh, like all of cubes. This report summarizes some of the details for all the cubes created. Uh, and by knowing what features were used to create these cubes, you can understand the features that are important to consider as you plan to move to SAS VIA. Um, when you're ready to move to VIA, your migration will be much smoother if you know what programs will work without any modifications. The code check, which runs on SAS 9.4 M5 or later, looks at any SAS programs and identifies program elements that are not supported in the compute server uh, for SAS VIA, uh, hard-coded part, part, uh, file path names uh, that may not be replicated in SAS VIA, and uh, reporting of the results again is surfaced uh, in SAS Visual Analytics. And when you are doing an upgrade, many items may cause issues. For example, you may not have the correct software order or configuration files may not be valid. The SAS 9 system evaluation tool uh, looks at the, for these issues that commonly cause problems. Identifying and mitigating issues with uh, the help of Analytium before starting an upgrade will reduce the risk and the time it takes to complete. Working with uh, Analytium, this information will help identify if there are reasons why an upgrade in place will not be possible for your environment, which is helpful to find out before you try something that could damage your environment. And depending on what you are needing to do, uh, you will leverage different applications as demonstrated uh, on this slide. Now, uh, we recommend building uh, the assessment reports in SAS VIA to cons consistently access the reports. Uh, although some of the uh, reports are also accessible in SAS Visual Analytics 7.5 on SAS 9.4. And now, um, let uh, we will start with uh, a short demo of the uh, four applications. Uh, 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 you will see uh, first uh, the SAS 9 inventory, and there are two commands that uh, uh, we will use. Uh, these are the, the first command here inventory content will run the execute the application, and it will produce uh, uh, some tables. Uh, and the second uh, uh, command is um, going to uh, put, uh, in, uh, put these tables in uh, one data mart and produce a package so it, it can uh, uh, these results can be viewed in SAS Visual Analytics. Uh, similarly, uh, with uh, the SAS 9 profile, uh, we run the, the execute, we execute the application and then again uh, prepare uh, the reports uh, to be uh, uh, built in SAS VIA. And uh, after that, we have uh, three commands uh, for uh, executing the uh, uh, to gather the SAS code and then to uh, uh, check the code and again to prepare the information for the reports to be displayed in visual analytics. And uh, the, the last um, application, SAS 9 system evaluation, uh, with um, one uh, very simple command here. Uh, let me uh, change my let let me go to my browser. Uh, actually, the first thing that I wanted uh, to show you here that uh, you uh, may may want uh, to first uh, download the uh, Sasline Content Assessment uh, uh, package, the latest version from uh, 
now the this web page. It is uh, in some support from download and completed. Uh, so uh, you, if you download the uh, application uh, that is uh, appropriate for your operating uh, system, uh, we either either Windows, Linux, or Linux. Uh, in our case, it is um, it is Linux. And now uh, I will open my uh, uh, Box external uh, application, and uh, here uh, you see on the left side uh, our sustain um, directory where I downloaded uh, the latest version of um, the sustain for the assessment suite. And uh, with uh, this command here, uh, you it will unpack all the uh, files from, from the uh, from the suite and all the applications. And uh, they will you will see one new uh, folder here called assessment. Uh, and in this folder you will get you will see all the applications and you will uh, have different uh, folders for the the data mart or for the logs uh, uh, or for the packages with the JSON files that uh, uh, have the, the visual analytics reports. But before you start uh, executing the applications, you need uh, to provide some uh, information in three configuration files. So uh, uh, you, you, you will be prepared to start uh, executing the application. The first file is uh, the uh, meta, meta file uh, application, uh, sorry, a file, and uh, here it is. Uh, so here we have, uh, you, you need to prepare to provide some connection parameters for your SAS metadata server. For example, the uh, metadata uh, customer, in our case, it's Analytium. You can provide a label for your um, server, for example, production, uh, the, 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 the host name, and also the encryption um, encrypted password. Let me show you how you can uh, supply this, uh, this uh, password. For example, it's a very simple, very simple procedure in SAS Studio. Proc uh, password in code is already a password, and uh, when you just run, execute it, and uh, here is your uh, password. Next, uh, you need to, to provide some information to the set and F, uh, YAML file. You need to, to provide the, the, the path to the SASCOM directory. Uh, I don't know if you can see very much well uh, the information here. Uh, also, you will need to provide the path to the configuration directory. And also, uh, if you have enterprise guide project directory uh, with enterprise guide project, you can supply uh, the directories uh, here. And the same goes for uh, any uh, catalog paths here. Ben, would you mind adjusting your microphone? You're fading out sometimes. Do you hear me? I think it's the microphone on your laptop that's being used. So if you can just aim oh, towards your laptop, thank you. Sorry, uh, let me let me try to change the settings. Um, so I guess it's from here. Um, oh. Do you hear me better now? Much better, thank you. Oh, thank you. All right, uh, so where was I? Um, yeah, I just showed you uh, that how you can provide um, the information about uh, the directories of your home, SAS home directory, the uh, mm, 
the configuration directory and directories for any SAS catalogs or uh, enterprise SAS enterprise uh, projects. And uh, and uh, when you're running SAS nine inventory, uh, there's also additional options uh, to specify. Um, in a paths list file, uh, which will, should contain a list of uh, locations on disks for inventory application to scan. And uh, this is the file here. Um, after that, uh, you are ready to uh, execute uh, your applications. And the first application that we execute is the, the inventory con content. Uh, command so uh, you can execute it uh, from the command line and the application first will perform some validation checks after which it will produce to create um, the inventory of all uh, SAS content and when it completes uh, messages in the terminal uh, window indicates the location of the log file here um, as well as the path to the um, data mart that is created with the tables. The terminal also indicates uh, the steps that uh, needed to, to perform to publish uh, the data. So what is publishing? Publishing is consolidating the data in one data mart. And after that, um, we, will, uh, uh, we will need to upload load these tables into uh, memory in SAS Visual Analytics and to import um, the packages uh, with the SAS Visual Analytics report. For example, uh, you will see here a, a folder packages and uh, inventory. And here is the SAS 9 inventory JSON file that we need to upload to uh, SAS via. Next, uh, actually this is the, the, the publish uh, assess content date uh, command with the data mart type inventory. Uh, this And uh, you also see the information that uh, the content successfully was published uh, to which uh, directory. Uh, similarly, similar is the process with uh, the profile content. Uh, command and uh, then publishing uh, the the, the content, um, the results from the profile content uh, application in a data mart to be ready to be uh, shown in the SAS Visual Analytics report and, uh, and so on. Uh, there's one difference uh, with, uh, uh, so for example, this is the, the, mm, the command for gathering the SAS code. You can choose either uh, from all locations or for specific locations for, for specific, uh, um, uh, type of uh, products. And uh, this is the comment for the exec uh, executing the code check application. Here you need to supply a scan tag for each, each time uh, when you run uh, the code check and to provide a source location uh, where the, the application will uh, search for a SAS code. After that, again, uh, we prepare the, the information to be uh, published uh, for visualization in SAS via. And uh, the last, uh, the last, the last uh, application, SAS system evaluation, which will uh, run and uh, provide you with information uh, for any errors that may uh, be put problem when you want to upgrade in place your SAS9 platform. Um, now let's go to uh, SAS uh, VIA. Uh, for, so from here, this is the SAS uh, environment manager that you can locate uh, from the uh, menu. And uh, in the data, in the data uh, tab, you will just import your data uh, choosing um, uh, any folder or drag and drop your files. And um, uh, this is to, to upload the data marked with the tables. And then uh, from the content, uh, you can choose uh, your folder and with just few clicks, uh, uh, you can import the packages that I showed you 
uh, um, a minute ago. And um, now let's have a look at uh, the, the report that um, that we imported in SAS uh, Visual Analytics. Uh, here you see the first report, SAS 9 inventory report. It contains information about the SAS content that exists in the environment, as I said uh, during uh, the, my presentation, and uh, artifacts that uh, you could uh, uh, see uh, and that are counted include uh, objects in um, SAS uh, metadata folders, SAS servers, um, uh, SAS content uh, in um, the uh, in the SAS content server. Here, as you can see, portfolio, the offerings, the type of uh, products, and you see the count here on the right. Uh, also, uh, on the file system uh, as well, you can see uh, some parts here, and um, as well as some information about uh, the, the 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 products, the version of the products, uh, the license info. Uh, and for example, you see the expiration date uh, on the right side, the, uh, the version uh, and so on. Um, so to recap uh, about uh, this, uh, this uh, application, um, it inventors SAS9 artifacts and um, and content, uh, and it can be run on multiple SAS9 deployments. It creates a data mark for each inventory. Uh, the inventor application finds uh, and counts various artifacts and contents. Uh, and we found this information to be very useful when uh, comparing the contents of source and target environments before and after promoting migration for our clients. Uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, the, the the other the other report, which uh, which is the profile report. Now uh, you see here the the more detailed information in this report about the um, items that were identified uh, with the inventory product. Um, so you can see information um, uh, about uh, the DI Studio jobs or the libraries, the stored processes, um, and you see here different um, uh, pages for uh, here, for example, the information about the more details about the DI Studio jobs. It's loading a little bit slowly, maybe because of my internet connection during the call. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, just to uh, to recap about this application is uh, that um, it ident it it provides a profile uh, a range of objects and types and. Um, it looks at uh, enterprise, for example, enterprise guide, enterprise projects, uh, all of cubes, as we uh, saw uh, just a second ago. Um, and it uh, can be run as needed on multiple SaaS deployments, uh, as, as we said about the inventory uh, application, and it creates data mart for each uh, deployment that is profiled. Um, now let's have a look at the next uh, report, which we find uh, very useful and uh, especially if, uh, our customers find very useful because it provides information about all the, uh, the SAS programs and uh, the SAS code that is compatible uh, with SAS 9, uh, with SAS via, sorry, but also, um, it provides information, a detailed information about um, code uh, that uh, needs to be changed or modified before uh, we um, commence any migration to SASVIA, which uh, uh, 
the, our customer sites very useful because they uh, this information gives them a very um, uh, very useful information to plan precisely the effort and time uh, to for preparation of, for migration and um, uh, for migration the, the code. Uh, for example, uh, you, you can see uh, also the hard coded parts in this application, uh, which is again very useful. So um, the the cust our customers. Um, now know what to change and uh, how much effort it will uh, take them to do so. Um, so, the code check to recap uh, is designed to assist with modernizing your SAS 9 platform to SAS via. And the application anal an analyzes SAS code files stored uh, in the file system and looks to for elements and procedures that may um, be incompatible with SAS via. And the SAS 9 environment on which it runs must be running uh, maintenance release five or later. This is important uh, to know uh, on which version of SAS 9 we can run this uh, application. And um, um for the evaluation for the system evaluation um application uh, the reports that are created um uh, html reports and uh they they can be uh, visualized in any browser there are two reports let me open them so the first one uh, provides uh, uh, metadata topology information. That's that is inf uh, information with all the uh, the the products, the the elements of your uh, SAS nine system. And the second uh, uh, is uh, contains uh, system evaluation summary uh, with uh, all the tasks and their status. Uh, and uh, this actually report is very useful because it uh, provides all the issues, uh, information about all the issues that might prohibit you from upgrading in place. For example, here we see in this report that we have total of seven issues, the issue, uh, some comment, and uh, any some uh, messages uh, related to these issues, which uh, really helps you when you want uh, uh, to uh, mitigate the risk uh, of from any upgrade. Um, and to, to recap about uh, this application, um, as I said, it can be used uh, to reduce the, uh, um, the risk uh, uh, when you have some problems uh, in your environment before you um, um, upgrade it. So while not a guarantee of success running it, prior to commencing any in-place upgrade, will uh, really uh, warn you of a potential issues and provide an opportunity uh, for remediation, increasing really the likelihood of a smooth and successful upgrade. Running system evaluation should uh, therefore be incorporated into upgrading place plans as an important preliminary uh, step. Uh, so, uh, and another very important takeaway uh, about this application is that you need to ensure quite sufficient time um, to, for remediation of detected issues. Uh, so uh, before you start um, the upgrade. Um, and uh, this is the end of um, the demo. And just before uh, the time for uh, questions and answers, uh, I would like uh, to to draw your attention to one more uh, useful information. Uh, the content assessment tool is upgraded regularly to improve the ability of content uh, to migrate to via seamlessly. And uh, the focus in new releases is on the content that is used most, um, uh, the features that are most valuable to customers um, and they need to be uh, available in via. Um, so, for example, the latest um, release of SAS 9 
content assessment tool from April, from just a few days ago, adds the assess to the assessment suits one more feature. Uh, the SAS9 create FAR packages, create SAS forecast archives for specified SAS forecast server projects to be migrated in SAS via. So if you have such SAS forecast server, now you will be able to see useful insights about it uh, to help you prepare better for this migration. Uh, and now uh, I think uh, it's time for some Q&A. Over to you, Ben. Thank you, Stefan. Um, thanks for that presentation. Um, I've prepared a couple of questions myself, um, so, but I'd also right. like to invite everybody, if you've got any questions, to use the Q&A and we can um, put those to Stefan. So we'll just have a think about that. Stefan, first question from me. Um, so how long does it typically take to um, run one of these assessments? Well, it really depends. Uh, it will be determined by your metadata footprint. Uh, how many STPs or info maps, all up cubes, DI studio jobs. Um, so run times may range from 15 minutes, for example, to hours or uh, to many hours, even 20 hours, depending on uh, how, how much uh, data uh, you have. It really depends on the size. Thank you. Um, and one more from me before we go to the QA. I see we've got a couple there. Um, is there a way to change your code before you migrate to VIA? Um, so obviously if you've if the tool's given us results saying that there's a number of changes needed, how would you go about doing that? Yes. Um... Uh, that's a really good question. Thank you for, the, for this question. At Analytium, we have uh, our own developed um, tools that we use to automatically change the code and uh, data that, um, and the, to migrate the code and data to the target environment. So um, even, even uh, to synchronize uh, the old and the new environments during a parallel testing phase. So yes, um, we can, uh, help our customers with this service. The question that we've got, um, does the SAS content assessment tool report on items only registered within SAS metadata or does it report on other items as well? So hard coded lib names in SAS code or unregistered tables? Yes, yes, it does. Uh... So that was that was shown on one of your reports, that wasn't it, Stefan, with the um, identifying those hard coded file paths, for example, um, in the code. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, another question: um, Can the application be run on the mainframe? Yes, uh, it can be run on um, ZOS mainframe. Uh, or Actually, we had uh, several of customers uh, that we work with on um, on and uh, on Mayframe, yeah. Okay. Um, and what if we don't have SAS Visual Analytics to visualize the reports? Can we still do this? How do we, how do we do that? How do we uh, do those reports? Yes, uh, we help our customers and we can visualize the data for you on our platform. So the data can be encrypted and transferred securely, so you don't need to worry about it. And that also offer that as a service as well, I believe. So um, if you're working directly with that, they will provision an area for those reports to be made available to you. Yes. Um, and another question, does the assessment contain any sensitive data? Uh, no, uh, the assessment, uh, um hides any personal identify, identifying data uh, or passwords. So it's really 100% secure. Thank you. Um, another question we've got, um, can you examine SAS code stored solely within a Windows folder structure, not in metadata? Yes, um, you can provide um, 
uh, path to the directory to the folder that you want to to uh, examine uh, to assess and uh, you just run the assessment that's all within those configuration files you ran through at the beginning yes yeah. okay great I think that's all questions so far. Um, I, think, I think we have a couple of questions in the chat as well. So one of them, can tool be used with the SAS via 3.5? Uh, can, can it be used uh, with SAS 3.5? Um, so it's designed to assess the SAS 9 platform, but you can import the reports in SAS via 3.5 uh, to preview the results there. In fact, if I'm correct, the demo platform is via 3.5, right? The one that we use for the demo. Uh, yes, yes. We uh, we used the SAS, 9, the SAS via 3.5 for the demo where we visualize the reports. Perfect. Another question from the chat. Uh, rather than Q&A, is, is there dependency on a SaaS maintenance release, uh, M5 or greater? And what would you recommend to your customers that are currently on less than maintenance M5? Mm. Uh, maintenance, which one, sorry? Uh, would, the two, would this tool work on SaaS that is less than maintenance, 9.4 maintenance M5? Can it work on a maintenance free, for example, or even SaaS 9.3? No. It works on uh, releases uh, SAS 9.4 and uh, higher. Okay. I think that's the last question from the chat. Ben, over to you. Yeah. So um, I'd like to thank you for attending today. Um, if you have any further questions, you can um, reach out to either myself or Stefan. I think our details should be on the slides. Um, and you can also contact us at the email address shown there as well. Um, if you'd like to know more about how we can help you um, at my SAS team, whether you want to discuss any platform um, migration plans, SAS consultancy or support with any of your analytics reporting projects, then please, um, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to speak to you. So um, thank you again for your time today and have a great rest of your day.